So as we already know, COVID-19 is impacting every aspect it feels like of everybody's life and everybody is over it already. Even those of us that still have our jobs, even those of us that get the ability to work from home, like it's not everything is cracked up to be, but we are still fortunate and blessed. Nonetheless, a lot of other people, unfortunately and sadly for circumstances and are completely out of their control, have been uh, negatively impacted. Hopefully this can blow over relatively soon so we can get back to some level of normalcy and you know hopefully people can start getting back on the right side of life again uh, which is always especially unfortunate when it happens for things that are unforeseen for things that are out of somebody's control that's when it really sucks but we saw that the governor of Florida Ron DeSantis yesterday finally issued a stay-at-home order for Floridians, except for essential things. Um, I guess essential things including church visits that are you know, involving large groups of people would kind of defeat the whole purpose. Well, nonetheless, nonetheless, that order has been issued. And we already know how this impacts uh, the WWE when it comes to WrestleMania. It has thrown a complete and total monkey wrench into the WrestleMania weekend, or the WrestleMania week, you could say, and just the whole festivities of everything. Like, and I kind of get the vibe in general, too, that, you know, all these people that were once planning to go down to Tampa, to go to WrestleMania, are not going anymore. Like, there is a discernible difference in the level of buzz and energy and excitement on a week like this, where there should be a lot of it. Even for those that hate WWE, even those that can't stand WWE and his product, can't stand Vince, they haven't watched WWE for years, that watch other wrestling and mark off for that other stuff instead of marking off for WWE. When it's WrestleMania week, there is a tangible increase in the level of energy throughout wrestling, period. Because in part of WWE and the big event that it is and all the other shows and companies that kind of leech on and latch on and do their things and kind of tie into it. Like, it is a whole week. It is a whole happening. It is a whole experience. And it just feels different this year. And now you've got a two-night WrestleMania. It's too big for one night. They still always try to find a way to make history, don't they? Even in the downest of times. But it's going to be in the Performance Center with no fans. It's just going to feel really, really weird. And I, like I said, it's going to feel like, to me, in a lot of ways, the WrestleMania we will want to forget relatively quickly. Give the Benoit treatment, if you will. But it does bring up an interesting conversation um, that you've seen some reports out there talking about the WWE due to the uh, governor's order down there in Florida. Uh, maybe in a situation pretty soon where they're going to have to take some time off, especially if they're not classified as essential personnel. Now, it sounds like they've already taped the Raw after WrestleMania um, in the Performance Center, but uh, it looks like this SmackDown was scheduled to be live, at least that's my understanding right now. Um, as a result, that one's certainly not in the can because that was designed to be live. Um, and it brings up the issue of what is WWE going to do if they can't do their work for a few weeks? And for me, I guess my first question is, well, if you didn't have any fans, and they already apparently recorded the Raw after Mania, why not have done more and put a bunch of shows in the can so that way you could give your talent some time off, you could take a fresh breath, you know, and take a step back. At the same point in time, still put out your product each week at a time where you don't have a lot of competition. I wonder, like, and I wonder if they were going to try and scramble to record more episodes. Maybe they're afraid of spoilers leaking out. Maybe they're afraid of this or that. Honestly, at this point, I don't even know how much it matters. Because people are going to be looking for a diversion any damn ways. And if you really keep a tight shit on everything... You have no fans there, you have no journalists there, you have nobody else there. Like You should be able to track down any leaks relatively quickly. So I'm kind of surprised that they didn't have more shows already in the game. If they already have WrestleMania mapped out, then why wouldn't you have already mapped out the Raw after Mania, done the SmackDown after Mania, and perhaps uh, the next couple of weeks of shows throughout the whole month of April. It feels kind of a bushly thing to do for a company like WWE to put a month's worth of shows in the can. But at this point in time, the circumstances and situation are unique, and it could call for some unique action. But if anything, I look at this as an opportunity uh, for something refreshing and something different and something that I've always been 
a believer in and an advocate of when it comes to WWE, knowing how relatively unrealistic it would be for a publicly traded company like themselves in the position they are to be able to execute and pull it off. But I've always been a big advocate of either A, intentionally working guys only on an eight to nine month rotation where you give them two, three, four months off every year, which is better for their bodies, better for their minds, and also better for the characters and the television product. It's always a natural way to keep things fresh for the talent, for the stories, for the fans, everybody. So you either go on some type of eight months, nine months on, three months off type of thing, and have some type of off season for your talent, or you go one step above and beyond, and you have just a flat out off season. Flat out off season, where you sit there and you don't do any shows for two or three months. And I know people somehow think that this would be disastrous or somehow it would be this or somehow it would be that. I, I just have never grasped how this would be a bad thing for WWE. Now you can say certainly they would lose some revenue and they would do this. Hey, I guess you could say there are technically impacts. But there is also the potential of you lose a little bit now and you gain a lot more later. The WWE could still make their product a year-round thing. But you put Raw on a different rotation from SmackDown, which you then put on a different rotation from NXT. And as a result, you could always have something running, but it doesn't have to be that same brand. It doesn't have to be that same product. And everybody gets a little bit of a mental break sometimes. We get that in sports. The NFL is pretty close to a year-round league. Yes, it's true. But honestly, training camp starts in July. You get through the season, then you've got the drafts, free agency, and then the draft carries you through April. And you can start saying, well, you get into May and June, you get to OTAs and mini camps. But realistically, there's a two and a half, three month lag in there where there's not much going on in the NFL world. And that's the biggest, most popular sport in the country. If they can do it, the WWE can do it. And there's absolutely no excuse to not do so. You're a television show, you're a form of entertainment. All of these other shows, even if they run 52 shows a year, they're only doing 13 to 26 of them as brand new episodes. The rest of them are repeats, reruns. If you were WWE, you could do that on some of the weeks that you didn't have a show. You could run a Best of Raw episode or a Best of SmackDown episode. Maybe you can show an episode from back in the day when freaking Austin sprayed down the ring and the rock and the McMahons with the freaking beer truck. You know what I mean? Like people might actually like seeing that on television. But most importantly of all, you get a chance to kind of recharge and circle the wagons from a creative standpoint. The talent, both the in-ring talent as well as the creative folks get a chance to kind of recharge and refresh a little bit. The fans get a chance to miss out for a little while. And sometimes when we don't have something for a little bit, it gives us a greater appreciation. It naturally refreshes us. I know I go through these waves where I watch a little bit, then I don't. And I watch a little bit, then I don't. And I watch a little bit, then I don't. And it helps refresh me a little bit. If I watch consistently straight through all the time, it will get me into that really, really, really negative place. And you guys have seen that before. It's a little bit healthier for me to not watch as much and not be as emotionally invested, to take a little bit of a break from time to time. And I look at it, and if you ran Raw on one schedule, you ran SmackDown on one schedule, Let's say you gave Raw, you said you have WrestleMania, then the next night it's the Raw after Mania, then you don't have a Raw show until you maybe get to May or June, so be it. And if you look at SmackDown and you said, okay, you know what we're not going to do? We're not going to have shows between the month of October and freaking December because it's going to run up against NFL and we don't want to be in that spot then that's what you do. Or you say it's running up against college football, Friday night games, or high school football, whatever the case might be. Like, I look at this as this is an opportunity that I know the WWE is not going to take, but I kind of wish they would. All these other TV shows out there do it. All these other sports out there do it. I really wish the WWE would use this as an opportunity to say, 
you know, we can figure out ways to do things a little bit differently. And I understand they have a lot of different masters to serve in terms of the stock market, in terms of the networks. Um, so it's, it's a likely never going to happen. But, but, but don't kill my dream. It just, I wonder if we go without WWE for a few weeks, if it's actually going to feel a lot better for people when it does come back and kind of provide proof of concept, if nothing else.